What's up, dudes? Chooch, back with another one. Out here doing a long range little ride on the King Song S20 van or S22. And this is the pre production wheel right here. And man, I really got a ton of footage riding this thing around. Went to some crazy spots. I'm just getting around to being able to show you guys, I mean, some of the great footage. And it just takes a while, you know, to edit and render all this stuff and, and get it all there. And this ride right here was a particularly very very long ride and it really kind of pushed the limits of the s20 or s22 and even over the course of the ride the suspension loosened up because of the gnarly terrain that i went down man this this place was crazy man this this mountain bike trail i don't even know if you could call it a trail it was like a stair set it was literally like so steep and it was so many drops it in it really was like pushing pushing the limits of it and I was wondering like halfway through what was going on and it was because what happened is you can adjust your preload back there you see how you can like if you turn that little uh, retainer ring that's above the suspension coil right there for the guys that are kind of new to this you can turn that and tighten it down if you're a heavier rider and it increases your preload and I've been riding this wheel a long, long, I mean, I'd been riding this wheel for about three weeks before this, after getting it all adjusted. And so over time, what had happened is that uh, retainer ring from every jump and every small little bounce and all that, it had kind of pushed up over time. You know, all it has to do is have a little bit of force and a little bit of vibration, and that ring will push up over time. Now that's that over the course of a lot of riding and you'll see exactly why that retainer ring was able to go up on that little um, on on the screw setting back there. It literally just kind of shimmied up over time. And I was thinking that something was hung up. I was thinking that the suspension wasn't traveling right. I was thinking that, that something was wrong or bent or something like that, but it wasn't. It was just because that thing had loosened up over time. And on the trail, it's kind of hard to, to fool with it and tighten it up. You really need to be um, at home chilling to be able to tighten it up good. And one way to do it is to completely take all the weight off the wheel, kind of pull it all the way out, kind of like pull it apart like an accordion, and then you can tighten it, tighten it down really good. Or either you can use like a pair of vice grips to kind of grab uh, two of the suspension um, coils and pull them together and kind of compress that suspension in there to be able to tighten it down. But you, you're going to want to get it tight. If you're a heavy, heavier rider, you're really going to want to get that, that suspension tight back there because you'll see exactly what went wrong is I just had no travel, guys. It, I had literally... Um, rode this thing so much and loosened it up that once I got halfway down this crazy trail it had loosened up even more and I was just like riding a non-suspension electric unicycle but you see I, down there I, th I was planning on starting my ride down there where you saw me a minute ago and the trail was just ridiculous and there's no way I could have gotten up it and I know exactly why now and I looked on the maps and I saw there was another trailhead, but I had no idea it was as far away as it was. And I didn't even put in all the riding on the road to get to the trailhead. And it would have been just way too much riding. But I went way up, guys. From where I started down there, I rode the main road way up in elevation and then rode to the mountain bike trails and then descended the mountain bike trails on the S20. And starting off, like, right here, I'm not noticing that my suspension was way too loose because I'm on the road. And then once I got started on the trails, I really wasn't focused on that. I was more focused on riding the unicycle and focused on the trail and not really focused on that my suspension was loose. And I didn't really realize something was wrong until about halfway through it. And then I was like, okay, yeah, this thing is not traveling at all. Something's wrong because it, it performed fine in videos. I mean, you've seen the videos beforehand and it had been performing fine. And then halfway through this video, it was just like a non-suspension electric unicycle. And even right here, it's, it's getting to that point. It's loosening up a lot. And then I hit a few bumps and then we were pretty much there. But all in all, that's just one thing. 
if your suspension's not performing, it's not that something's hung up, snagged, or that the 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 inner part is not traveling right. It's just that you need to increase your preload tension. So that's one tip right there, guys. Other than that, I've been riding this thing a ton. I put a lot of miles on the S20. You can see I've really I've done a lot of creek crossings with it. I rode it in snow, rode it through a good bit of water and had no issues with it. I, um, I've crashed it a few times, not too bad, just a few little fall overs, nothing really bad at all. Uh, typically with a wheel, you know, I'll have at least one good time where I've smashed it on the front. And even with the front bumper right there that people were talking about being faulty, um, I had no issues at all with it. But I really didn't crash very hard on the front of the wheel. The, the headlights on this wheel are really, really good, guys. They are so bright at nighttime. Um, you can check out the video I put up before this one. I have a good shot in there of the headlights at nighttime, and it they work good. I like how you can adjust them, so they're kind of like um, like rock shocks on like a Jeep or something like that, where you put, would put the lights under, like under the Jeep if you're doing rock crawling and stuff like that at nighttime so you can set up your line and everything with this wheel it's really cool because if you're riding on the road you can you know put them up to where you can see farther away and if you're riding on a trail at nighttime you can tilt them downward and all you need is a um, I think it's a 2.5 millimeter allen key allen wrench to be able to adjust them and they're actually the headlights are in a place to where they're not going to get hit or damaged or anything like that and guys, whenever you have the suspension on this wheel completely set up perfectly, it rides great. This is the only thing and the only time I noticed anything wrong with this wheel was actually when, whenever I was out cruising around and about halfway through this ride. And you can see exactly why the suspension would have loosened up on this ride. It was crazy. And it was all these little rungs they do that for erosion mitigation on some of these trails that are really steep and there'll be one-way trails so this is definitely i think a black diamond mountain bike trail coming down this it had to be and if my suspension would have been set up right i would have been able to go much faster down this now i'm not saying anything you know bragging i'm saying i would have gone way faster down it but i'm saying i would have gone a good bit faster down this but the whole time I was wondering what had happened. And I was afraid that I had bent something. I really was. I was afraid that uh, the swing arm had bent or something had bent and that the suspension wasn't traveling right. On the trail and being in the moment, the last thing I was thinking is that the adjustment for the preload would have loosened up. Because it takes a lot of force to really, and you'll, you'll notice that whenever you go back there to adjust your preload on that suspension and and turn that retainer ring you'll notice it is very hard to turn it and it's one of those things you just wouldn't you wouldn't suspect that it would loosen up you really wouldn't but if you're riding down constant big drops like that big old big old like two foot drops and rocks and stuff over and over again that's what will loosen it up so if your wheel gets to a point where the suspension is not working anymore that's nine times out of ten what it's going to be on the king song and guys i even got a bunch of dirt in the um mechanism and all that stuff too a lot of people talked about that and were like hey well you can get dirt in the whole mechanism and whatnot and you really can't guys it's not it's not bad at all even with some crashes i had where it did spin out and throw some dirt like in of the whole mechanism all you have to do is just a few little jumps and it, it pushes all of it out of there and just I, I literally just sprayed it out with a water hose this wheel is super waterproof and there's not much to it it's easy to clean and you don't really need to get it soaking wet you can just spray it you know the sides of it real quick with a water hose hit it with a wash rag some soap and this thing looks shiny and brand new good to go again it, this wheel really impressed me King Song really did a, a great job with it and 
and the reason the reason you're hearing the suspension sound like it is is because it literally is loosened up so far guys there is there's no travel going on hardly at all anymore in the suspension because it just loosened up so so much as soon as i got back home i realized what the problem was and then i tightened it down and i was really really loving it after that Absolutely like i was mobbing. especially loving it then because whenever i got this fuel i didn't take the time to get my preload set i adjusted everything else right but i never i rode dude for three weeks with it just kind of sagging essentially and even then I haven't tried the master yet. I'm very eager to try out the master. If any company wants to send one over, I'll plug your links, dude. Send me a, a master and I'll get that thing rocking. Actually, I think I'm about to get the master sent over from E Wheels next. I told Jimmy Chang to keep it as long as he needed it because I've been pretty happy with the in motion V12 high torque, guys. Honestly, honestly, dude, I've been loving that little wheel too, dude. I love any wheel really they send me, so um, I, I take it out and have a blast on it. I rode, I rode today on the Inmotion V12 high torque. I rode like 65 miles today on that little wheel, dude. So I mean, I, any wheel is a great time, and if you can't afford this one, dude, just buy it. And if you're looking at this hobby, you're like, hey, I want to get into it, dude. I'm not telling you to just buy this wheel. I'm saying the S20 is a great wheel. I'm eager to try out the V-Goad Master. I think the V-Goad Master is gonna be incredible, guys. I think the suspension mechanism um, for the whole travel mechanism on the inside of the V-Goad Master is definitely, it looks like it's more well-built than this. It's almost like the front forks of a motorcycle on the inside of the V-Goad Master. You can pre-order that one in the links below as well, guys. I have no bias towards either one of them. I'm not saying the S20 is better or the Master is better. Um, if, if you want to get one or the other, definitely do it, guys. And if this video right here tilted your opinion towards one or the other, you can still pre-order the Master through the links below, and it helps me out. Just because I'm riding the, the King Song doesn't mean you have to pre-order the King Song from my videos at all. If I had the master, I'd take the master down the same exact trail, give you the you know the exact same feedback if it performed the same way with, with its shock. But one thing about the master is it has air suspension on it. So you're not going to get the effect of that preload pushing up over time and loosening. So you're never going to have the problem I had here with the V-Goad master. Now one thing I can definitely tell you about the Master just by looking, because I have been watching as many videos as I can to kind of tell you guys what I feel about it and, and give you all the rundown on what I think the difference is going to be of the two. And I can pretty much tell you, man, from, from looking at those videos, I can genuinely tell you um, one thing I like on the V-Goad Master, the pedals look incredible. I like the, the spike pedals on the V-Goad Master. They look really good the um aesthetics of it arguably you know some people will like that wheel more so than this one but i think the king song s20 in person guys even with aftermarket power pads like the grizzly pads it looks good guys the wheel looks incredible has just a nice posture to it where it just stands up stout and looks aggressive i like the red accents on it can't go wrong with it I like the way the V-Goad Master looks without all the padding on it. I like just the the raw V-Goad Master without that um, like foam padding around it. You know that black foam padding that you see on there like where your power pads and all? I think the Master looks so good just as a raw wheel. Like just the raw components to it where you can see that suspension um, like this uh, like the cylinders like suspension arms kind of on the sides of that thing. I think that looks really good. But one thing about the Master is it just doesn't have the same suspension travel as this wheel does. Now right here with the suspension completely loose, they have probably about the same travel, honestly. And I was so used to riding this wheel with it being plush, really, really plush and having a lot of travel that I was not sending it through here, guys. If my suspension would have been set up right, I'd have been able to really crank through here a lot quicker and send it through these trails another reason i really went and 
sending it to the maximum capacity on these trails, guys, is I didn't know where I was at. And I was very far away from where I started at, and I had no idea, really, I'd never been on the trails before. So I haven't hit these trails before. If I had hit them before, over and over and over again, then that's when I would send it. And I've even talked about that before. You really need to be careful whenever you're going to a new spot with the trails and whatnot. You really don't know what to expect. So this is a completely new trail for me. Never, never rode it before. And that's why I'm just kind of taking it a lot easier than I typically would be. So if you're seeing this and you're like, hey, dude, you hit trails faster than that on your non-suspension wheels. And, you know, arguably you could say so. But I'm telling you, if the, the suspension would have been set up right on the S20 on that trail and say I would have hit it 20 times, it would have really been able to see the difference in how well this wheel performed as opposed to a non-suspension wheel on that type of terrain. And I think it's kind of obvious that it would. I mean, and that's very unique. There's not a lot of people in the world that have trails like this anywhere. And I probably honestly wouldn't want to go hit this one again after doing it one time. Because I got back to the bottom, even the, even the, uh, the ranger stopped me over here where I was. Super cool guy. And uh, we just talked for a minute and whatnot. I think I had him on my side by the time I was done with it. I was like, man, I was like, all my buddies are sitting back over there just drinking beer, not doing a damn thing. I said, I'm out here riding around. I said, I'm on my unicycle. I said, I'm making videos, having a good time, you know, just cruising around. I am said, I'm not harming anything, man. I said, come on. I said, I said, yeah, I said, that's ridiculous, you know. I think he was on my side after that. I said, it's um, <laughs> cruising over booze. And I said, they're sitting back there playing beer pong. And I said, I'm out doing something productive, man. I said, get off my case. I think I had him on my side afterwards. And I was like, man, I just, I, I felt like I completed the amazing race getting off of there. I said, I, I don't want to ever do that again. I said, I'm good. I was like, peace out, man. I was like, I'm not going back to this trail. Yeah, he was just like, well, class one, whatever e-bikes aren't allowed out here. And I was just like, well, I mean... I, they, they don't know the class. Like, what is it? Is it pedal assist? I mean, I think it's pedal assist. I think this is an ab workout, and I think you're assisting the pedals. So, what is? I, I don't understand. And all those bikes out there, like all, if you if you go to any trailhead now, literally go to any mountain bike trailhead, and you'll just see e-bikes out there. They're just, I mean, all of them have a throttle to them as well. They, they're not all pedal assist bikes at, at these trails, guys, that I'm, I'm watching. I think in order to be able to ride mountain bike trails, you need a spandex suit with a Garmin logo on it or a Cliff Bar logo. You need to have it really tight so you can see your package. I think I might get one of those, and then I won't have a problem from anybody. So I, I, think, I think the gear has a lot to do with it, so, you know spandex is the way to go guys you gotta join the movement we look we look too scary on the trails guys we're not doing any more damage than a mountain bike or anything but we just have to we have to look the part man we just have to, to join the crowd get that tight fit in that tire and we'll be good to go